Well, Phil, you know, there's obviously we've only got a half hour and there's so much that we could talk about, but let's kind of just speed things forward to the point where you decided to go ahead and, and, and sell the company and what, what that looked like. Okay, wow. Uh, well, I got old. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I was 70 years old and uh, that was five years ago. And I just felt that it was time to do that in my life. I uh, really had no apparent heirs uh, and maybe I was looking for the payday and doing something different mm -hmm. with my life. Uh, a lot of philanthropies, a lot of things that need to be done with our Columbia River salmon. Uh, and I've, I've always been very active with that, of course. Um, and a lot of places for travel. And besides that, I wanted to move to Palm Springs where you have a place. <laughs> yes, yes, I love to get down there in the wintertime. Yeah. Nowhere else in the world I'd rather be than right here in the gorge, but not so much in the winter. Totally, totally. So, We're in complete agreement on that. Yep. Yeah. So it, uh, that led to um, just the word out. I let the word out. There were several different companies that were interested in acquiring Lure Jensen. Uh, Lure Jensen really is a, an icon in the Northwest for trout, salmon, and steelhead. And we had all these other segues, you might say, or footprints in all the other parts of the United States and of the, of the world, as a matter of fact, in various regions of the world, uh, that uh, people really were interested in expanding their companies, of course. Uh, even companies that weren't really interested in, weren't really in fishing tackle themselves, but they recognized that, that uh, Lure Jensen name was really an icon in the industry sure. and they could take it from there. Um, so we wound up in selling our company to Rapala, okay. which is a company from Finland uh, with manufacturing places all over the world. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, uh, it was a good match. And of course, the driving reason th is that they could pay more. Uh -huh. <laughs> so. How many employees did you have at the time the company sold? We had, uh, we, we had at the highest, we had around 400 employees. Wow. But we had an office and a manufacturing plant in Vancouver, BC. Uh, one in Ensenada, Mexico, and then a small manufacturing plant uh, and distribution point uh, so we could gain access to the, to the Great Lakes market in uh, Muskegon, Michigan. Oh, okay. Uh, and the varieties, uh, not the varieties, but the uh, combination of, of all the employees there was a few more than a 400, but at our Hood River location, we had, uh, when, we, when we sold the company, we had around 250 there. Uh, and I think we had a lesser amount because we were getting more efficient in what we were doing. Sure, and technology probably Tec and technology, you know, does change yes. that yes, too. Yes, of course. Now, is the operation uh, still, are, is there still anything in Hood River? Well, I almost wish you hadn't asked that. That was the <laughs> painful part. I'm sure it is, uh, yeah. They did, uh, uh, and I advised them to, I encouraged them to. I should say you really don't give much advice to a buying company. They just say, sure, Phil. Right. Yeah. yeah. But they put a manufacturing, a small manufacturing and um, distribution point over in White Salmon at a, a nice little operation over there. And they employed about 20 people for about the last uh, four years so that, that um, we know that the window of good fishing for salmon depends on the run and the strength of the run and the allocated season of the run. And it can be very short. Mm. It can be as little as a three-day season. More often than not, it's a two-week window really? where the fishing is good. And uh, part of the magic of fishing lures is that you get there with the color, the size, the action, and everybody wants it because he got that fish on it. You know, They're all saying, hey, look at those guys in that boat. Look at those guys in that boat, you see. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, that's the lure they want. So they all go to... Larry's Sporting Goods or Fisherman's or Walmart or wherever they go. And they uh -huh. say, I want that fishing lure. And you've got to be able to respond in a moment. And that, I think that was, I know that was the strength of Lure Jensen because we were, our painters were right there. And, and we worked 24 hours a day. That's how we built the company. Um, 
A little story, a little sidebar story. Sure. Uh, there was a lure back in the uh, 50s, 51, 52, called the uh, Cherry Bobber. Okay. Of course, you guys weren't alive then. You wouldn't <laughs> even know about that. But, the, but uh, some of your viewers, some of the fishermen will remember the Cherry Bobber. Well, uh, there was a manufacturer up in Seattle that made those, and, and it was on the, um, I can't remember the name of the river, uh, but it became really popular. And a uh, article in Life, Life magazine was done on that, on the Cherry Bobber, the sensation from the Northwest. And it made national headlines in all the sporting goods publications wow. or whatever, and there was this huge demand for it. Well, my brother, uh, Lord Jensen Jr., he immediately uh, copied it, you might say, called it the Cherry Drifter, uh, and geared up production 24 hours and made enough production that it tripled the size of our company at the time overnight. Really? I mean, in, in, a, in, a, in a year's time, until they found out that it really wouldn't catch a muskie yeah. <laughs> or a bass, <laughs> you know, and they said, okay, <laughs> this fad's over, you know, uh -huh. this hula hoop is done. Uh, and, uh, but with that and with the profits that we made, he built a new block building and set it set in place additional technology for, to, that in, enhanced or enabled further growth. So it was, a, it was a substantial building block, this, this lure that wouldn't catch a muskie, but it sure did catch the people's eye when it yeah. got a lot of publicity. Right. Shows you the power of advertising. Absolutely, thank you for saying that. Yes. Um, <laughs> so now, you know, the company sold, it's, you know, in the past a few years, how, how is your life now? And when you look back on things and, and this economy and, you know, uh, you, you, you referred to yourself, you know, oh, I'm an old man. Well, um, I don't, I don't take that very lightly. I see you as, you know, somebody with a lot of experience and somebody who, um, it's just a real pleasure to, to, to have you impart some of, some of that. So. Well, thank you, John. <clears throat> a mantra. The spirit never dies. Uh, and the other mantra, attitude is everything. Yeah. Uh, so the main thing that, that I'm really passionate to do now is to memorialize fishing in the West. Uh, fishing in the West is not what it used to be even 25 years ago or 50 years ago or 100 years ago or when Lewis and Clark came here. Uh, the people in Dallas will remember Suferts and how they, with horses, sained the river for tons, I mean tons and tons of fish, and they canned them. In Astoria, there was 50 canneries in Astoria. None of that exists anymore. Yeah. We are lucky to catch two or three salmon a year people that are passionate still go out. And there's a shortened seasons that we have with the, with the dams that have been on the river. Oh, I could go on this subject for a long time. I bet you could. I could. The dams that are on the river and the amount of money that uh, Bonneville Power, BPA, and the federal government sp spends in fish restoration or fish enhancement. What to do with the, pff, the sea lions, the squawfish, the, the other predators. Uh, the the uh, I'm not sure what the what the uh, the birds are down at the island at the mouth of the Ast by Astoria, that that yeah I mean I mean there's predation, uh, there's uh, uh, overfishing off offshore with the commercials, um, so there's many many challenges of fishing. I doubt that it will ever be the same as it was uh, when my father started that business. Right. Uh, he and my brother would come to Salido Falls wow. and, and fish with their spinners out there and cast along, right alongside the Indians who were dip netting. Uh, and they would catch, you know, three or four or five fish a day. Uh, it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, and those were the days, you know. And you want to preserve that? Those well, I want to preserve the memory of the that memory at of least. That, yeah. I have been on board with the, uh, on the board of the Hood River County History Museum for off and on for 35 years. And, and we had a grand idea that, that we would build a, a Western fishing museum anchored by Lord Jensen. Uh, but that, because of the economy and what have you, has kind of slowed down to a, a virtual crawl. Uh, there's still that idea in place and, and we'd like to do something, but it's, uh, have been a little slow process. Yeah. So that's been a passion of mine. That's what I've been working on for a long time. And, yeah. and um, so I try to do that. But, yeah. 
But I'm so busy with so many other things. I, yeah, you know, I mean, you very full life. And I want to check out your man cave when you get that hey, finished. Hey, you got to do that. So. Phil's Blue Moon Saloon. I love it. Private. For, <laughs> private. By, By invitation, invitation only. only. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Phil, thank you so much for coming on. I hope that we can have you back. Oh, it's my pleasure. Time. And like I said, I'm taking you up on coming out there and checking out that place when you get done. So yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you. Appreciate you pleasure. coming in. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. You guys, thanks so much for watching. And again. Uh, we'll see you next time and take care of each other. Do you have a guest idea? Let us know. Go to localite.com.